This time... She's from Essex. I'm going to find out what life's like for the thousands of Westerners trying to break into Bollywood. They're like, OK, let's get a foreigner and you're going to be half nude in it, you're going to be doing... I was like, no, I'm not interested in that. I'll discover how modern Bollywood is adapting in a country with deep political divides. We were shooting and a couple of mobs came and they started physically assaulting us on the set. And how it's appealing to one of the youngest populations on Earth. It's working constantly. Thank you. Thank you very much. There is something so incredible about this city. Mumbai feels like what I'd imagine America to be like in the 1950s. It's the land of opportunity. There's rampant consumerism. The economy's opened up. There's people making lots of money. Every big business is here. And it's not only one of the world's fastest growing economies, it's one of the youngest. Almost half of the 1.3 billion people in India are under 25, which means this place is changing at a radical pace. And at the heart of it all is the Indian film industry. I want to know how Bollywood fits into that change, how the traditional film industry is keeping up with a modern and much younger audience with very different tastes from their parents. And my journey into this new Bollywood is starting at one of the oldest film studios in India. For over 60 years, Mehboob Studios have been used to film some of the most famous Bollywood films. This is amazing. They're shooting a house party. This is a big dance number for the film Sonu Kitty Tuki Sweetie, about two best friends and a girl that comes between them. And this is a film clearly aimed at that young audience. It's the main man, it's the main choreographer, Bosco. Bosco is one of India's best known choreographers and has helped create more than 350 Bollywood dances. And today, he's agreed to let me loose on the dance floor. Are you going to give me some moves? Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Look at this man. How much hairspray has gone into that? It's quite something. Are you a dancer? Yeah. It's all right. Come on. Yeah, there, there you go. Riding. We're riding a horse. And then? Oh. Am I doing it? Was that right? I feel like I'm going to be... Are you going to teach me the moves? I'm about to be in the first ever Bollywood movie, dancing. Uh, go forward. Anita, go to your right. Anita, go to your right. Perfect. Piggy, and sound. Go And there's something else that strikes me. It's amazing that they've got so many Westerners. In recent years, there seems to be a trend to have more Westerners dancing in Bollywood movies. Many of them Brits. She's from Essex. She's from Colchester. What are you doing in Bombay? We're just having fun. Having a party. From? UK. Whereabouts? Well, Brighton, London. We haven't done it before in our lives, so we've come here, been here for two months. Yeah, so many shoots, like, and we're loving it. What, loving what's it. life like? Um, it's very it's different yeah. from the UK. Definitely a culture shock. We've got a massive culture shock, yeah. There's loads of people from England here, aren't there? Yeah, we live with eight girls in an apartment. It's pretty cool. Eight of you? Yeah. All dancers? Yeah. <laughs> all dancing in Bollywood movies? Yeah. In one flat? Yeah. yeah. And do you get paid one? Well? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They pay for um, our accommodation, our food, uh, we have a driver, we have everything, everything is provided for us. Please go out lunch around 40 seconds. There are more than three times as many movies being shot in India now than in Hollywood. So perhaps it's no surprise these girls are drawn here. Where are you from? Um, England. Well, Whereabouts? Uh, Birmingham. You're a Brummie? Yeah. How long have you been here? A month and a half. Is that it? Yeah. How are you finding it? I'm still getting used to it. When I landed, I was like, what am I doing? I was like, ah. And you have a good life out here. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Good, yeah, it's good pay. It's like £1,000 like, a month. And that goes a long way here, yeah. doesn't it? Oh, yeah, like, it's a really decent cost wage. Of living, it's like... When I was a kid, Bollywood was famously prudish. There was no kissing on screen, and the raciest it got was a woman in a wet sari. <laughs> to me, these overtly sexual hip-hop moves show just how much this place is changing. Why are there so many Western girls dancing? We kind of get the soul uh, party vibe happening. Every time we have uh, a lot of Westerners, they're kind of easy with the costumes, they're easy, they, they have the body language. A lot of them are trained in that kind of style, they're flexible, they kind of raise the bar for all of us. It's just a nice healthy competition that keeps happening. Uh, some of the Indians also kind of blend very well with them, so this, it's a great mixture of brown and white. And everybody looks pretty. They do, everybody looks very pretty. Yeah. Everyone in this room is very gorgeous. Yeah. Time. So it's no surprise this Bollywood film has more in common with a modern music video than the dance scenes I know from the classic movies I watched as a kid. So that whole part will go one, two, three, four, five. Ta, correct. Taking. What is happening right now? Is just amazing. Um, this is called positioning the butt. One, two, three, four, five. Ali, lift your uh, top a little. It's interesting that it's just the Western dancers that are in this shot. In fact, there were a couple of Indian girls, but they got moved out of frame. But maybe it's a height thing. And so, five, six, seven, action! It's working, comes to Bollywood. It's interesting that many Indian films release their big song and dance scenes like this. Lines to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're singing. How's it going? Um, what are you yeah. singing? I'm singing this one right here um, to Peter Mariaki to Aki Aladaya. Come on then, I'm going to test you without the paper. Go on, what's your line? Okay. One, two, three, go. Kapuri Mariaki to Aki Aladaya. Oh, sorry! <laughs> yeah. Do you have any idea what you just said? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Every year, hundreds of young Brits land here with dreams of stardom. Part of what fuels those dreams are the Brits who've managed to conquer Bollywood and make a fortune doing it. In Chennai, 800 miles southeast of Mumbai, Liverpudlian Amy Jackson is on her way to set. She's been a big star here for more than seven years. Her dad, Alan, is visiting from the UK. It's a bit cooler, doesn't it? <laughs> Does it? <laughs> oh, it's sweat. Yes. Do you want the aircon on? The aircon. Where is Come it? On. Amy is a household name in Chennai, another hub for Indian filmmaking. More than 80% of India's films are actually made outside Mumbai. I love the way they use their horns here as well. Teachers, Do you think, I think you could too. drive here? No. I know you can't drink for that. No, you couldn't. Well... Why don't you drive on the M62? Oh, well, excuse me. After winning Miss Teen World in 2009, Amy was approached in London by an Indian director who flew her out for her first role. Since then, she's starred in more than a dozen films worth more than £60 million. And right now, she's the female lead in the most expensive Indian film ever made, called 2.0. It'd be fun. Yeah. Today, they're filming the big dance number. I'm, I'm not the, the strongest dancer, I must admit. It's not in my blood to dance. 
at the well, drop of a hat? perhaps not as easily as maybe those that have been brought up with dance. Well, 100%, which the majority of people in India, India have. Of have. Absolutely. There's only one dance in this whole film, one song, so it had to be spot on. I was having a sleepless night. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, my baby. How are you? How are you this morning? Mm, good. How did you sleep? Where's the wake? Where's everything? Amy's dance scene will shoot in less than two hours. Get me those bins over here. Uh, go back. Please sit On set, choreographer Bosco has been flown down from Mumbai to design this dance as well. I think it's yours. We're waiting for lights to be fixed, dancer costumes. So. When things are messy, and then suddenly things come together. That's the fun of it, I guess. Natalie spent three years training as a professional dancer in Cambridge. They're trying to put lights on the costume, which don't seem to be fitting on right now. It's been happening every day, I'm not going to lie. Every time I've been in here for a couple of hours, doing it again and again. <laughs> In the four months she's been in India, she's danced in 20 films. But today's shoot has been one of the toughest. I was dancing this morning and I literally felt one of the strings start um, electrifying me. And because I've got a belly button piercing, it was caught up with the metal as well. Just like that, you should be awesome. There are 55 backing dancers in Amy's scene today. It seems all the male dancers are Indian, but just like the house party scene in Mumbai, the majority of the women are Western. It may be because they help a film like this appeal to an international audience, but it's also impossible to ignore the fact that India is still obsessed with fair skin. The Indian skin whitening industry is worth hundreds of millions of pounds, and many of the largest brands are endorsed by Bollywood stars. Bollywood is often called the dream factory, and part of the dream it's selling is a westernized ideal of beauty, which doesn't reflect the average Indian woman. Brought England to India, of course. <laughs> In fact, it's actually just a bowl of coffee, but it looks very English. I just put my pinky finger out. <laughs> <laughs> Two Point Zero is one of the first Indian films to be shot using 3D cameras, and in recent years, some of the world's best technicians from Hollywood have started moving to India, drawn by the big budgets and ambition. I don't want to disparage Hollywood, but I'm having more fun on this project than I ever did there. <laughs> Ray Hanesian is a 3D stereographer. After 50 years, this is the gig I've been dreaming of. These cameras are the most precise. I. I think have ever been built. We see every bit of what was put into building this set comes right to you in the audience. So this is really the most fun I've ever had doing my job. <laughs> Despite the big budgets, they're relying on some surprisingly simple tricks. <laughs> Door open, only close. Open. This is only close. Everything in the set is operated manually by people. Uh, we don't have any kind of uh, motors or anything. We have to lower it by hands, we have to get it high by hands. Everything is manual. For assistant art director Kishore Rajendran, Cheap labour costs mean he can assign a person to many of the tasks that might be mechanised elsewhere. We trust manpower. We trust manpower more than machines. Amy is one of the biggest female stars in this region. She has more than 4 million followers on Instagram. Which is surprising considering that when she first arrived in India, she couldn't speak a word of the language and could barely dance. Well, this is the guy who's actually made me dance. I could not dance before, and prior to this, I was useless. So he, I no, was, no, no, I was, no, 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 no. <laughs> don't get that video up. I've got, <laughs> when she started off, 
she couldn't hear the beats. I didn't listen to the music. She didn't listen to the music, so she couldn't really understand. So she would just miss a beat and you know, she would get an awkward posture. And I proposed to her, learn to enjoy your dancing. Forget the awkwardness of what it is. Just learn to enjoy your dancing and eventually you'll start breathing it. Well, Bosco makes that easy to do. I love working with you. Everything's possible. You know, that's what I love about Indian cinema. If, if there's a problem, it's OK. There's three solutions we can do when we get on set, so nothing's too big a deal, which is great. I've been here for seven years, but it still feels so new to me, and I'm constantly learning. I do wonder how I managed to get here. The journey from Liverpool beauty queen to Indian film star has been an extraordinary experience for Amy and her family. I'm so proud of her, so's her mum, so's Liverpool, so should be the UK, and let's hope that it, it goes from sense to strength. While many Western dancers can practically step off the plane and onto a Bollywood set, it's much harder for those who want to make it here as actors. Back in Mumbai, I'm heading to meet some of those aspiring actors, fighting to make it in the world's biggest film industry. Hi, how are you? So I'll just go through the lines. And... They're often referred to here as strugglers. Anissa is British Asian and was brought up in London. Age? I'm 26. I'm 5'4". She moved here six years ago and immediately began auditioning all over Mumbai. It's Koshiki. Okay, okay, okay. And she's landed supporting roles in a number of Bollywood films. So this is Aramnagar, so it's where most of the auditions take place, actually. I'm meeting her along with another aspiring actress, Australian model Lucinda, who's only been here for two years but is adapting quickly. So I'm, yeah, I'm learning Hindi as well. Yeah, how is it? My Hindi is good. I'm not sure how I'm doing it, but I'm very happy. But now I'm not fluent. Because we're from London. Because we're from London and sometimes we have an accent. That is really, really impressive. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you so much. When they first arrived in Mumbai, both girls found it tough. I came over in 2013 for the first time for four months, and it was very, very challenging. And I was like, after four months, I was like, I'm never coming back to India. But I did acting work, and I trained in acting. And then I thought to myself, you know, do I go to LA, or do I go back to India, and do I try? Because I think there's some unfinished business in India. You know, just at least give it a shot. Yeah. Yes. Lucinda picked Bollywood over Hollywood as the place to break in. This is increasingly common, especially for young Western women with the right look. I think they like the foreign kind of aspect of it, but they do like your features to sort of blend in or be Indian somewhat. Yeah. I'm half Middle Eastern, so, and I've got the dark hair, so you can kind of, in some way, fit into the culture. I have been into, like, meetings with people who have asked me, can you dye your hair darker? Can you wear brown contact lenses? Because I, I think they Actually, like that, like you said. Let's and turn them back into Indian. <laughs> let's go through uh, double the process. Yeah, it is. So you girls have been to auditions. If I was to come, like, as an aspiring actress, <laughs> what, what advice would you give? Like, what are the struggles, that, what are the pitfalls that you have to be aware of? Well, you can go to a, a, a casting and it's completely, you know, you don't even know what you're going for. You know, they're like, OK, let's let's get a foreigner. And then I've gone there and they're like, OK, we, we want you to do this. You're going to be half nude in it. You're going to be doing... And I'm like, OK, uh, I've just spent an hour travelling and this is not what I'm looking for, but thank you very much, see you later. Do you think there's a different expectation of girls from the West than there is of Indian girls? Um, I've spoken to some Indian girls who have um, 
sort of been approached about the same thing and it's a struggle for any beginning actor people think that they can take advantage yes. of someone who's really trying to make it and, and that you know there's maybe that initially there's that desperation with it and how what is the casting couch situation so initially I think I, I did encounter a few people who were who were pretty forward and who pretty much they like to use the term compromise so it was very upfront what's um, why what happened give me tell me what um, the situation so I, I know a couple of casting coordinators this is before I joined an agency had sort of upfront said like you know this is the casting and so and so is happening um but you know the producer um they are saying you know will she compromise and you know you immediately i don't know how we understand what that means but we just do i guess because you're just exposed to so much but you know i kind of like made clear that it's not something i'm interested in so please don't contact me but I mean, it happens. Luckily, I mean, that's pretty. That's pretty blunt. That's that, pretty, that's pretty blunt. That's pretty. There I, it is. I and what, and what's the what's the payoff? You, if you compromise, you'll get the part. Is that what they're saying? I mean, what... um, that's how it comes across initially. You have to kind of filter through all of that. And now, I think after six years, you know, the, the, the people who are really doing the great work, they know you. They'll call you if there's something legitimate. You were nodding away. I have had someone approach me straight off the bat, even before meeting. There is a compromise. So it was like so direct and I, and I, I went, uh, excuse me, and uh, I was like, no, I'm not interested in that. But the fact that they were so forward, it sort of goes, well, is that, is that normal? You know, mm. the fact that normal? they just message mm. straight away. Is, is, that, is that normal? It's, it's not everywhere, no. I think with this new generation of talent, suddenly things are functioning a little differently. And I think there is a bit more professionalism generally. There is. Just as Hollywood is finally being called out on its decades of sexual harassment, I'm hoping the new generation of actors over here will continue to demand changes to old sexist attitudes. We have just managed to get on the set of Padma Bhatti. It's being directed by one of the greatest living Indian film directors. So this is um, quite a privilege. Posters for the film Padma Bhatti are everywhere in Mumbai, and it's expected to be the biggest film release of the year when it opens in less than five weeks. I cannot tell you how excited I feel. There you can see the high rises of Mumbai in the distance. We've driven about an hour out of the city and we've come to a very famous place called Film City. Badmavati is a story loosely based on a famous poem about a Hindu queen and a Muslim ruler who tries to capture her. The film is set in the 14th century, and this production involves some of the most intricate and elaborate sets ever made. This is amazing. The set is being built. We're going to do some filming in here in two days' time. Just take it in. For somebody who's grown up with Bollywood, this is such a privilege. The attention to detail, this lovely sort of lattice work in the windows, the beautiful shadows that are being created by the light. I feel like a princess in a palace. Padmavati's big dance number is a spectacular piece called Goomer, starring Deepika Padukone. The video was released online last night to build buzz for the upcoming movie. Kruthi Mahesh was one of the choreographers who helped design it. And she taught me the basics of Bollywood dancing. I watched it in the car on the way here. It's beautiful. It's everything, everything I want from a, a song and dance sequence. That's it. That's all we also want. So tell me what the song is. Explain what a ghumar is. Ghumar specifically means to turn. Initially, women had to dance on sand. So if you stand in one place, your soul kind of burns. So to avoid that, they kept turning. And what about the outfit she's wearing? I mean, obviously, it's you have really to work. heavy. Because when she took one turn, it was difficult for her to stop on that first turn. 
it's really difficult keeping in mind that the skirt is going to take you for another six turns. So. They're not bad. How bad? <laughs> not bad. Have I got the part? Kruthi's dance scene has had a great reception from fans and got 10 million hits on its first day. But not everyone in India is happy about Padmavati's release. As director of photography, Sudeep Chatterjee has discovered. How's this shoot gone? Because there has been a few ups and downs. This one, we had a couple of disruptions, uh, very unfortunate uh, disruptions. Some people from Rajasthan, they uh, felt that uh, we were dishonoring uh, the Queen by doing the film. My question is that, uh, do you even know what is there in the film? Have you read the script? What Sudeep calls a couple of disruptions have actually been front page news in India for months. The set of Sanjalila Bhansali's film Padmavati in Kolhapur, Maharashtra is vandalized and set on fire by a fringe group. Violent protests have broken out across India, many by political and religious groups who allege the movie distorts facts and includes a scene in which the Muslim king dreams of becoming intimate with the much-beloved Hindu queen. Neither the film nor script have been released yet, but this rumour was enough to lead to a direct attack on the production. We were shooting inside a fort and a couple of mobs came and they kind of um, started breaking equipment and pushing around and, and physically assaulting us on the set. A bystander filmed the moment the director was assaulted. completely unprepared for it because something like this never happens and it uh, took a while for the cops to come to actually take us out of that situation it was very traumatic how terrifying it was, uh, it's um, unbelievable so we couldn't uh, we couldn't uh, go back we, we felt it was not safe to uh, shoot uh, there but we, we shifted location uh, somewhere else and we built some sets and we managed you built you rebuilt an entire set we uh, yeah we the chitor fort was created here in bombay I mean, it's 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 crazy that something like this can happen. Is that because and the challenges are filming in India? Right now? Right now, yeah. These protests meant filming had to be suspended as the entire production moved from their fort location in Rajasthan to a soundstage in Mumbai. This has put a great deal of pressure on the set designers. There's a team of 150 men working in shifts, but the delays have meant they're still racing to get the final sets ready for filming in less than 48 hours. Tell me where we are. What is the set that's been created? See, basically, this was a darbar set, which we have converted into a harem set. So it was something else? Yes. It was his court, the yes, darbar, the court. and now it's uh, his harem. harem yeah. So this is so what I'm trying to get my head around, Chetan, right? So you've been shooting a year. You're releasing in five weeks. And we're still shooting. <laughs> You're still building the sets, dude. You're still building the but sets. But we'll pull it off. We what? have to, otherwise it's not possible. To do. The pressure is on. The set designers might have practically unlimited budget, but they have very limited time. So this is one of the beautiful hangings that they've got on the set. I can't believe they're still painting them. To meet these tough deadlines, the team often need to employ a little Indian ingenuity. Everything is possible in India. There's a word for this, right? Jugaru. 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 Yeah. yeah. If this budget is not sufficient, then you can cheat everything. That is called Jugaru. Like what? On this set, what have you done? Show me. See, this is plywood and this is real work. OK, so that is work. This yep. is hard. Yeah. And this is supposed to be flex. <laughs> it's material. Yeah, this is called Jugaru. Jugaru. <laughs> so this is a quick fix. Quick fix. So if you haven't got time to build a wall, use something yeah, yeah. completely different. That's, That's very different. clever. Oh, yeah. Can I do it? Yeah, yeah, sure. What am I painting? Where should I paint? So. See this. If it wasn't for me, this set would not get finished on time. <laughs> Moving the production from Rajasthan back to a Mumbai studio may have caused delays, but it seems it was a smart move. The protests only got more extreme. 
cinemas were attacked, buses destroyed, and in a live television appearance, protesters brandishing a sword threatened the film star Deepika Padukone and director Sanjay Leela Bansali. And one politician even offered a bounty, equivalent to a million pounds for the beheading of the director. So it's been quite an incredible turn of events around the release of Padmavati. The groups are so powerful that actually they have now managed to defer the release date of this film. It's absolute madness. It's due for worldwide release in a matter of weeks, and there have even been threats to UK cinemas that screen it. But the battle is not just with protesters. The Indian Censorship Board hasn't classified Padmavati yet, and there's discussion of changing the title and content of the film before it can be released at all. These films are considered much more than entertainment here, and this controversy reveals the fault lines that still exist between Bollywood and some of India's deeply conservative religious and political groups. Now I'm heading to meet someone who's been at the heart of a very different controversy. Photograph is a film shot entirely on location around some of Mumbai's most popular landmarks. Here it comes, this is the film set. Hello. They need a piece of kit to be able to finish their final shots. It's Bedlam on the location boat as they're racing to finish the shots they need before the sun sets. The tea man. So if anybody wants a cup of tea, that's what they're getting as well, so they're refueling. But the sun is fading fast, every second counts. We're losing, we're losing light. But it's not the actors or director of this movie I'm interested in meeting. Neha Kamra is one of Bollywood's leading makeup artists, but she's had to fight for the right to do what has always been considered a man's job. So from which year have women been legally allowed to work as makeup um, artists in 2015. Is that it? Yes. So that's 2015. That's, yeah. uh, Let's back up, because you trained as a makeup artist. Yes. And then you wanted to work in film. Yes. And what happened? A certain set of people from the union would just barge onto a set and they said, you're women, so you work as a hairdresser or as a hairstylist and not as a makeup artist. So, so let me get this straight. The makeup union of the film industry mm -hmm. would not allow women to work yes. as makeup artists. Yes. Why? Um, because they said that, you know, this is a law. So it felt, it felt very bad because you were talented, you have the potential. But it's so fundamentally sexist. Yes, in, it is. In a, it is. In, in this day and age. Absolutely. Yes, it's it it's beggar's belief. Applying makeup to the faces of actors was seen as unsuitable work for women. Neha chose to work without the required union card, but was in constant fear of being caught. So once I was I was working, the next thing I know is that people have come from Union and they've been checking everybody's card. So what, what did you do? Uh, no, I had to in. leave the set and hide in a vanity van That's so crazy. that I don't get caught. Caught for what? Caught for nothing. And I didn't want it to uh, hide behind a certain door when somebody would just barge in because I'm not a criminal. I am just earning my bread and butter. Neha joined a group of other female makeup artists bravely led by Charu Kurana. They took their case all the way to the Supreme Court and won. For the first time, women could legally apply makeup in Bollywood. I'm very happy and satisfied that I'm like all the women who want to become a makeup artist, they have opened their jobs and opened their opportunities. They can work, they will be recognized by their work. I have the highest regard for Charu because she's the one who stood in Supreme Court in immense heat with people cursing you for whatever you are doing because it was we were fighting against the system. So what does that, I mean, for me, I'm think, listening to you, I mean, I'm, I'm so surprised at what mm -hmm. you're telling me, but at the same time, in my head, I'm thinking, is this old India versus new India, kind of the battleground being Bollywood? And actually, this is another way in which the film industry is really challenging convention and changing things in India. Yes, uh, nowadays, women know what they want.
relationship with Bollywood is like it is with the whole of India. I absolutely love it, but it also frustrates the hell out of me. The way it seemingly hasn't changed for such a long time, the way that women are portrayed. But thankfully, as with the rest of India, it's changing quite a lot at the moment. You see, there's a generation in India now that have grown up with the same diet as you and I. They've grown up watching Friends and Hollywood movies, and they live in big cities like this, and they want to tell their stories. And that means, finally, the film industry is changing. To find out just how it's changing, I'm back in Jodhpur on the set of the film Manikarnika. It tells the epic story of a queen who leads an army of women against the British. And today I've come here to meet actress Kangana Ranaut. She's playing the lead, a brave female warrior. In real life, she's taken a similar role when it comes to talking openly about women's rights here. I want to get her perspective on how the industry is changing. But the only way to meet her is on set. And to do that, I need to become an Indian warrior myself. Wow. Can I be one of the warriors? So leggings on underneath. Oh, I've got jewelry as well. This, this is cool. Let's get it on then. Hello, ladies. You ready to fight the warrior army? There are already a hundred women on set preparing for the battle tonight, and I'm so excited to play a small part in the telling of this important story. Let's put the shoes on. Will they fit me? I've got quite big feet. The transformation begins. You know, Rani means queen. So you do everybody's makeup? Uh, 15 to 16 years. 15 to 16 years working as a makeup artist makeup. in the films. Definitely. So you're the chief makeup artist? Yeah. yeah. And you're the assistant? Yeah, assistant team. Uh, 25, How? 20 assistants. 20 assistants? Yeah, assistant. Wow. All, but all men? All men. No women? No. Despite the progress that Neha and the other brave female makeup artists have made, their legal victory was only a little over three years ago and currently men still vastly outnumber women in Bollywood makeup departments. Very simple makeup. Yeah. Very, very natural. Very natural makeup. Ah, oh, my warrior princesses. How are you? Hi. I'm fine. How are you? I'm feeling great. Are you excited? Guess I like that experience. Oh, that's like that. We are very excited. First time in a film? No, no, no. We are working. I'm a senior stunt lady. Oh, she's a stunt lady? Yeah. So you know how to do all this? Yeah. Will you show me your moves? Okay. How amazing to be playing a, a part like warrior princesses. It's a, a female army. It's an amazing opportunity, right? Yeah, it's a It's less than an hour until filming begins and the leading lady, Kangana, has just arrived on set. She's been at the forefront of a growing trend demanding that Bollywood put more women in leading roles. But there's still a long way to go. Only 12% of Bollywood movies released in the last three years had women as their central character. People everywhere, there's the main man, director, so... Hello! The director, Krish, has agreed to let me play one of the Queen's soldiers. I'm ready. You are ready to fight? Absolutely. I just need to find somebody to teach me how to use this sword. Let's do that. So we'll just go up and we'll... Yes, go. lead the way. What do I do? So, he's coming for your head. Mm -hmm. Slowly. You go this way and then you go. Yes. Go, go. From here, you're turning. Then you're cutting. Yes. Okay, this is complicated. How am I going to remember all this? It's like strictly all from here. I'm doing sound effects. Nice. India's here. I should have become a warrior. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten. The hundreds of extras have all been rehearsing their moves for the past four hours. But now, the star, Gangana, has only a few minutes to learn her complex fight moves before filming begins. Okay. 
You don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Who took you down today? All right. Good fighting. <laughs> The stories of the women who fought in this rebellion against the British are largely unrecorded in the history books. So it's an indication of the changing times that their role is finally being recognized. It's 2.30 in the morning, and there are still dozens more sequences that need to be shot. But the director has paused filming so I can meet Gungana. All right, so this is it. The moment I get to meet the lead actress. Thank you. The Queen, how are you? You look phenomenal up there. Thank you. How's it going? Are these blood stains? Oh, it's because you've been killing the British. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, what a gift of a role for an actress. It is. Particularly in Hindi cinema. I don't know about you, but maybe you feel the same way as me. Growing up watching Hindi films, yeah. I was always deeply frustrated because the roles were always someone's wife, yeah. someone's sister, someone's daughter, and they would always cry. Yeah, and it's sexist as well. You know, like There are so many references where women who are referred to as timid, scared person who's always hoping someone rescues them. Where does this come from? This is, uh, this is a brain, you know, a kind of a brainwashing that uh, the patriarchy does. So I, I, I made a con conscious decision not to do any of these big hero films. With When you say a big hero film, that's quite an interesting way of describing it. Yeah. So that means it's all about the man. Yeah, it's all about the man. And I said no to it because I don't identify with that image. And I am much more than a lover. I am, I am a mother. I'm a hero. I'm a savior. I'm a, I'm a knight with a shining armor. You are. You're a <laughs> kick-ass swordswoman. That's what you are. It's now the most ex exciting time to be an actress in India. Yes, I think yeah. When when I started out, honestly, it was agonizing. Is to get told that. Um, that if, if you want to work, you need to know you have a shelf life. It's the most ridiculous thing to be told to a woman that a shelf life. I'm, like, am I a product in a window? Like, I have a shelf life, you know, which is like two to three years. You're it's changing it, right? You, here you are playing such a phenomenal role. And we're, we're thrilled to be making a film on the greatest woman. I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of it. Gangana has been challenging the Bollywood patriarchy for years. Famously, in a recent online video made by a comedy group called All India Bukchod, which saw her playing a Bollywood starlet fed up with how she's treated by the men on set. Uh, you are. I am Priya, the actress. Who? Female lead. Love interest? Oh, love interest. What do you got it? Oh, hero ke saath jo rehti hai. All India Bhaktar is a YouTube channel of comedians, and they're doing something that's really radical for India. It's never been done before. They're taking a look at the film industry in a sarcastic, irreverent, and frankly, very rude fashion. These lines are my scene pe milde iodex hoto se. My character is a physicist. I like it. Take playback, just to confirm. Controversial comedian Tanmay Butt is the man in charge. Tanme. Hey. hey, how you doing? Good. Lovely to see you. He was the one to approach Gungana with a risque idea for a parody sketch to help publicize a new film. Action! So we had the sketch written out long ago which was, um, can we do a sketch where on a Bollywood set while singing an item number, can an actress call out every inch of sexism that she has to face? And the phrase, cause I have vagina, just fit perfectly into it. Cause I have vagina. Cause I have vagina, yeah. Cause I have vagina. So get Kangana to do it. So Kangana fit right into it because one reading and she was laughing and she said, let's do it. Not only do you call out all the sexism, you're also kind of really sticking it to yeah. hero culture, the kind yeah. of idol worship of these yeah. Bollywood male actors who yeah. are demigods.
in general there's a culture in bollywood about no one likes to speak about anything that is edgy or could be misinterpreted in any way or just have an opinion because once you reach a certain level of popularity in this country um, you are expected to play it safe and be vanilla big big meri baat mon na ko meri haan banai na re keh raha hu replace hi dega piya ka mere daar banai na re But I think now Bollywood split up into two parts. There's old Bollywood, everybody who's been around since before the 90s, and there's new Bollywood, which is uh, actors who are like 30, 33. For a lot of them, the old Bollywood, which is running around trees and singing songs and you know regressive stuff, all that is kind of passe for them. They are the ones who are like, I want to do something cool. I want to, I want to do a show on Netflix. I want to travel the world. They're that, they're that generation. <laughs> So that this is a new confident India. It is a confident India. It's a lot more confident. This new India doesn't care and doesn't have the time for for rules that old India had. And this new India not only has a lot more confidence, it also has a lot more money, at least for some. Look at that building there, that crazy skyscraper, that really uber modern structure. which looks like it could be a hotel or a load of offices it's actually home to a family of five people it was famously built for about a billion dollars 42% of mumbai live in slums and yet it's also home to some of the richest people on earth and one of them lives in that skyscraper this one building is a towering example of the staggering economic inequality here India's 57 billionaires control more than 70% of the country's wealth. And while an entire high-rise can be built for a family of 5, just a few miles away, millions of people live in slums with no running water. This extreme disparity between the haves and the have-nots is having a big impact on the types of films being made here. It's Saturday morning and I've come to Kanduva, a hilltop settlement in one of the largest slums in Asia. I'm here to meet the unlikely cast of a new film that was shot here. Rakesh Amprakash Mehra is a BAFTA nominated director who cast four young unknown actors to help him tell a story known all too well to hundreds of millions of Indians. Nini so we're in it we're in a shanty town now we we're in a yeah, 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 yeah. 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 the satellite discs so there are thousands of dish TVs everybody has a dish TV so that yeah, there's internet but there are no toilets no toilets yeah you've got mobile phones you've got satellite dishes you've got the internet but no toilets no toilet it's it's amazing half a billion people from the indian subcontinent uh, they defecate in the open and Fifty <laughs> percent of the rapes happen when the women go out to defecate. Even girls under ten are not safe. So one had to tell the story, and this is a story of a eight-year-old boy, Kanu, who wants to build a toilet for a single mother, Sargam. तो जब मंदिर की क्या जरूरत है? हमें टॉयलेट की ज़्यादा ज़रूरत है. Kanu, Kanu माफ़ी माँ Kanu. तेरे साथ रेप हुआ है? मैं क्यों माफ़ी माँगूँ? and nirala ringtone and mangla <coughs> they are his friends and then they will go to any lengths even approach the prime minister of india to get their job done mere pyare prime minister main sargam ka beta kanaiya ke ghar pe to bada toilet hoga agar aapke ghar pe toilet nahi hota aur aapki maa ke sath aisa hota jaisa meri maa ke sath hua to aapko kaisa lagta How did you cast the children? We we met a lot, uh, a few thousand, and these are the ones who emerged. Are they are they from local area? Do they live all over Bombay? Right. So not just this place, and so close by, but yes, they have experienced life. They have seen it, yeah. and they were one with the location. In researching the film, Rakesh spent weeks living with the locals to understand the issues they faced. If you see that building there. is got 50 floors so on one floor 
there are 10 apartments with two toilets each, that makes it 20, and over 50, it makes it a thousand toilets. In that one block? In that one block. And there are 100,000 buildings like that in Bombay. Then you look at these shanties. There are over a million shanties and not a single toilet. So that is a story one wanted to say. Not only did Rakesh use Kanduba as the location, the local residents also helped in making the film. Come meet my friend. Offering their homes up to become wardrobe departments and makeup rooms and helping to transport the hundreds of pounds of equipment in and out each day. How did it take a while to convince them about what you No, they just opened their heart. They, they understood I came here, I sat everybody down, and I said, no, this is the movie I'm making, mm -hmm. and I need your help too. They yeah. opened their homes up to you and invited you? Yeah, I'll it. tell you, seven days into the shoot, uh, I was not eating the unit food because mm -hmm. they were cooking for me my favorite dishes. <laughs> Go, show me your house. Who lives no. where? Yeah, this was the makeup room for the kids later on. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's the, the bathing area. The ladies and the men go in. This becomes your curtain and you bathe behind. Yeah. This was your makeup room? Yeah. No. Did you not put a bit of mascara on those lovely eyelashes? No! <laughs> Hello! Excuse you me! You look so good, those beautiful eyelashes. Rakesh also invited hundreds of residents to be part of a huge scene celebrating the festival of Holi. But it was a far cry from the intricately choreographed dance moves of a classic Bollywood number. It's not like a song and dance, it's a celebration of Holi. And I just asked everybody to do what they want to do. And, and, and yeah, and that was fun. Rakesh's film, Mere Pyare Prime Minister, is part of a new trend in Indian cinema to tackle serious social issues, particularly around sanitation. The Bollywood hit, Toilet, Ik Brim Katha, told the true story of a wife in a rural village who refuses to return to her husband until he builds her a toilet. The film brought worldwide attention to government campaigns encouraging women to demand toilets at home, with slogans like, no loo, no I do. Akshay Kumar also starred in the recent film Padman, which challenged social taboos even further by telling a true story of the man who created low-cost sanitary pads. There is still a stigma surrounding menstruation in India, and the film has been credited with helping to change that as many Bollywood stars joined the movement and posted photos of themselves with sanitary pads. For his part, Rakesh hopes his film will do more than just describe the problems here in Kanduba. He wants to be part of the solution and already has helped raise money for the first proper toilets here. Well. So you put this toilet in? Oh, look at your lovely board. Thank you to the lovely people of Kanduba for all their love and affection during my shooting. We've done one here, one downstairs, one in a school here, in this location, like three sets. So you've given back? For an increasing number of filmmakers like Rakesh, the problems facing the country are becoming the very basis of their storytelling. These new Bollywood films aren't just about escapism. They've become a tool for celebrating, challenging and changing modern India. It is the youngest nation in the world. It has got so much energy. It's got so much potential. Uh, there are millions of stories. If there are 1.3 billion people in India, there are 1.3 billion stories to be told. What I'm finding fascinating is that it's the power of cinema here. Mm -hmm. The film producer can not only make a movie, you're actually implementing change as well, aren't you? 
you know, there are deep wounds. So I didn't want to scratch the wounds. Actually, I wanted to uh, apply a balm on them, a soothing balm. I began my journey through the world of Indian cinema amidst the singing and dancing of mainstream Bollywood. And it seems fitting to end it here, where the next generation are telling completely different stories. India is transforming faster than ever before, and that's bringing with it a lot of challenges. But it's exciting to see how the film industry here is not only reflecting this change, but is in many ways at the forefront of it. In the largest democracy in the world, this is still the art form of the masses. And while Bollywood has always been larger than life, its real strength comes from its ability to adapt and keep up with one of the most dynamic and exciting cultures on Earth.